Right, so this demo is partly about the HTTP analyzer and a little bit about understanding how the client works in terms of round trips to the uh, server uh, when you're working with ADF. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new page and just take normal depth temp, take the employees and drop them as a table on a page like this and that's the only thing that we have on the page is basically just this table and what I want to show is how this page behaves at runtime. Okay, so we're going to save and run the page. So as the page comes up, have a look at the specific uh, way that the table is rendered. Alright, so if you notice it, there was a one-two step. So basically we got some data basically covering all the way up to here, and then we got some other data coming in. Okay. And this is actually Ajax transaction happening here, but maybe it would be interesting to see what is exactly happening here. So this is where the HTTP analyzer can come and help you. So it's part of the JDeveloper tool, so you just go into Tools, HTTP Analyzer, and that's the way you get it to work, and you can press this button to configure it. Um, the one thing I did here is I basically configured it to override my regular proxy and inside here I basically gave my regular proxy setting which I copied from my browser okay and with this um, setting what is going to happen is that I'm going to have my browser access this port as a proxy okay and then this basically access the analyzer and then the analyzer is going to forward this to the other proxy, which is what I told him here. Okay, so this is the first step uh, to configure it here. And then what you probably want to do is you want to have a browser instance, and I'm starting a new Firefox instance here with a specific profile. And in this profile, you'll want to go into your preferences and set a proxy that basically goes to your local host and the specific port of the HTTP analyzer, 1899. So once you have this, you can actually, when you're accessing it from the browser, you're going to the HTTP analyzer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start the HTTP analyzer, pressing the button, and then we're going to go to the same page that we invoked here. So go over to Firefox, paste it, and when the page loads here and you switch back into JDeveloper, you can actually see the whole set of network communication that happened. Okay. And there's actually several steps in here that got invoked. Uh, we sent some HTML and some XMLs. And the interesting thing to see here is that we sent over two XML transactions. So the XML transactions are actually the transactions that bring in the data to the page. So you can actually see it if you double click the XML. You can see the full details and the full text in here and if you actually scroll across you'll see things like the name of the employees being displayed here and the ID and stuff like this. And we did it in two round trips. Okay, so this is the other one with some other data. So why are we doing two round trips? We only showed one table. And um, so if you actually go into the table and go into the binding tab and look at your executable for the table you see that we have here a range size of 25. If you look at the page, we have about 50 records that we show. So if we want to, example, uh, for example, minimize the number of round trips that we're doing, we can change the range size of the executable behind this table to be 50 or whatever we seem uh, to like in our page, uh, according to the height of the table. Save and compile it. Okay, then we can clear everything here go back to our browser and basically reload the page. So now if you notice it, the whole set of data came in in one go. If we actually look at the uh, transactions or round trips, we can see there's one XML round trip that went over and brought all the data. So this is again nice, um, just to show you, the uh, situation could be much worse, for example, if you just have five here, and you save and compile and you go back to your browser, let's clean everything here first go back to your browser and just go like this 
So as you can see, we now have multiple XML transactions. Basically, each one of them, if you look into the message, you'll see is bringing about five records. So it's very important to actually have the correct setting here for the range size. So another thing that we can use the HTTP analyzer to look at is, for example, a lot of people are asking about how can I do pagination with the table component in ADF faces. And what people don't realize is that the table is doing pagination. Um, let's take another page that we developed here called the table page. Okay, and this has uh, the table in a smaller box. Okay, and if you actually look in the binding part for it, here we have 20 records fetched in one go. Okay, so when we run this page, okay, we get the data in here, and it would be interesting at this point to look into what transactions are we doing. So we did one XML transaction to get some data into the page. And um, one, by the way, interesting thing that you can see here is the size of the data that we moved over to the page. Now let me get this browser um, sized a little differently so you can actually see both things happening at the same time. If I stand on the first row and I click the page down button, you can see another transaction going over. Look how small it is. It's only 763. What we actually brought in this transaction is just the fact that we need to highlight the row. If we click page down once more, we actually did a couple of other transactions that you can see here, okay? And this is the one that actually brought more data, okay? So this brought about 20 other records into the table. And again, as we continue clicking page down in the table, the data is fetched over into our table as needed. So we're not getting the whole sets of record into the table in one go, but rather we're using um, sets of records that we're transmitting using XML into the table and populating the range that we need to do. Another interesting thing to see would be what happens if we actually, let's clear everything here, and let's actually drag all the way to the end. Okay, you can see that the transaction that we did here, we didn't bring all the rows of the table into the table. We did, it's the size is about the same as what we did before. So we basically took and populated the last 20 records of this area. So this is again very smart functionality that the table gives you out of the box and how you can see it happening with the HTML, HTTP analyzer. And one thing that I should uh, remind people at this point, this type of tuning is um, has to do with the communication between the browser and the middleware. It's very important to know that there's a lot of other tuning that you can do on the other layers and how they interact. For example, if you look into your view object for employees, okay, and you look in the tuning section, you'll see this number in batches of, which basically says how many records I'm fetching from the middleware, sorry, from the database to the middleware in one go. And this number should probably match the number of records that you're doing or you're showing in your UI uh, if the view object is dedicated to a specific UI. Um, so take a look into other tuning parameters of view objects if you want your application to perform well. That's it.